mini skirt on, dip my body in glitter. Pop, pop, form sneakers, all the boys want a picture. Two, two, four, four cars, I make rich look richer. Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all. Mini skirt on, dip my body hello, in glitter. Hello, hello, hello. You're now tuned in to the A Little Bit A Lot podcast. I'm your host, Kristen, and welcome back to another week. Uh, This week has been not so great, guys. I think we need to just like jump straight into it. Okay, um, I feel like with my platform, I haven't, like I, you guys know that I focus on mental health. Like, it's not just the main focus. The show is called A Little Bit A Lot. So I'm talking about a little bit a lot. Um, And that includes mental health, but also pop culture. So I always try to keep like a fun mix of things. But especially with it being like mental health awareness month, I feel like this revelation that I've gone through this week couldn't have come at a better time. You know, and I feel like for the most part, there's been so many aspects about my mental health that I haven't really been open with online out of the fear of my family finding out or trying to like disown me for speaking my truth. But I feel like what I went through this week really just kind of showed me that I can no longer continue to keep protecting people that aren't willing to protect me who I should have been protecting me since I was a child. So I just felt like why not use this time to be like transparent and open up a little bit more about my childhood trauma. I know in the past I've discussed how I have anxiety. I've dealt with depression. um, I've shared my experiences growing up plus size and you guys are even like my grandma being an almond mom and how she's always so health focused and has shamed me in the past for my eating habits instead of like being there to help me work through them. But I don't really think you guys know fully how negatively my grandma has affected my life. And that kind of just came boiling to a head this week. So this may be a triggering topic for some. And if it's so, then do what you need to do to take care of you. And you can click off of this video if you're watching on YouTube or this podcast episode if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, which... By the way, if your girl is being vulnerable, if you could to help support me, give this video a like, comment to let me know if you've dealt with something similar to the story that I'm about to share with you and subscribe because I am on my road to my first 300 subscribers and leave a review on Apple and rate that five stars on Apple and Spotify if you can't. I mean, self plug. But (laughs) anyways, um... Yeah, so I don't even know what I was saying before that. Jeez, my mind has just been like all over the place this week. But either way, I wanted to be able to be transparent, okay? Like, it's a chop. We need to start opening up. And sharing this publicly is really scary. But at the same time, it's like, dang, like, what else did I build a podcast platform for if not to speak my truth, live my experiences, and have a space for people to be themselves in and be comfortable in? And if I say that I want this to be a safe space for the girlies, and I'm said girly, and I can't even be safe in my space, then like, what's the point? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, if you guys saw on Instagram, my Instagram at a little bit, a lot podcast, I did share over this weekend that I had a difficult time on mother's day with my grandma when I went over to see her for the holiday. And thank you to everyone who was supportive during that difficult time. Like I just posted it because I needed to be able to have a release. I wasn't doing it for attention. I'm not doing this video for attention. Like truly, this is just like a therapeutic space for me to let out my thoughts and be able to be creative um, and make something beautiful out of my pain or victories. So even if nobody watches, like this is for me at the end of the day. So I wasn't like looking for sympathy or anything like that, but the amount of people that like either, you know, reacted or commented and like poured love into me was so overwhelmingly beautiful. Like I just had no idea that so many people genuinely cared for me in that way. And it just feels so special that like so many people who are strangers can understand and relate to my story more than my own family. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the beautiful ladies who reached out to me. Like you guys are amazing, amazing, amazing. 
Um, but we are going to get into like with Mother's Day. The problem with going over to my grandmother's house is that like it's an extremely triggering place for me to be because growing up, essentially, my granny was my first bully. Um, she has never lifted me up in any way, shape or form. So that is really difficult to deal with. And the only person that I'm talking about in this specific situation is my grandmother and her two sons, my two uncles. Um, like my mother hasn't like contributed much to my childhood trauma or my father. They're supportive and they do not agree with any of the things that my grandmother or uncles have said to me. But yeah, so I just want you guys to know that like you guys see my dad on this channel. It's because he's supportive. You guys will see my mom soon because she's supportive. It's her mother. That's the problem. And her sons, my grandmother's children. My mom is not the issue here. Also to any of my cousins or any other family members, like no shade, no tea to you guys. I'm telling my story and I have a right to express how I feel and things that I've went through. So yeah, going over to my granny's house is like a really difficult situation for me. Um, every single time I know I'm going to have to see this woman, it fills me with dread and a deep sadness. And I have to prepare a week or two ahead in therapy to make sure that I have coping skills and exit strategy in case being around her is too overwhelming. Um, but I have decided to go no contact with her after this week and as well as her sons, my two uncles, because this weekend, I feel like when we had a conversation, my mom tried to like open the floor for us to try to talk about our family situation because I've been no contact with one of my uncles already for three years. And for some reason, even though he's disrespected me, um, my grandmother wants me to continue to try to make up with him. And I've already tried to apologize to the things that I said to him, even though he was the one who was hurtful to me first. Um, but they don't care about that. She doesn't care about that. She just wants me to kind of just shut up and be agreeable, even though her son is the problem. And when she tried to bring it up this weekend, I tried to ask her, like, what do you want me to do about that? And she didn't really have an answer. And it just seems like she constantly uses excuses for her sons but then constantly wants to like try to make it seem like her grandchildren are the problem mind you I'm not the only one that's beefing with an uncle she has two sons one of them I'm not talking to and the other one my cousin isn't talking to because they both are crazy okay like they both have said some pretty offensive things to each of us and intruded themselves and overstepped boundaries in our lives on multiple occasions, but neither of them feel like they're the problem. Even though they're both supposed to be the adults in this situation, I understand I'm 28, so in my eyes, they still think I'm a child, but it's like, one of you is also like a grandpa, like you have a grandchild and you still can't be mature enough to see that like, both of you are the problem. So it was really frustrating because I went over there to go see my grandmother just to spend Mother's Day with her and my mom, and then now all of a sudden I'm being bombarded about our family issues. And basically I feel like when I tried to explain my side of things, she didn't really want to hear me. And she constantly invalidated what I was going through and what I was feeling. I also told her that my mental health was bad because of our family situation. And she basically rolled her eyes. So that just kind of tells you that like, she's not a compassionate person, like whatsoever. She only really wants to see things how she wants to see things. And she only paints the picture of how she thinks that I am instead of actually seeing me for who I truly am. So because I was constantly trying to fight and say, Hey, I don't see what I did wrong. I also tried to apologize, but like, how is it my fault that he doesn't want to apologize? And he said he would call me back. He never did. How was this on me? she didn't have an answer. I started crying because I felt like once again, why am I 28 years old sitting in my grandmother's house on mother's day feeling like I still am not being heard or seen. Like you wanted to bring this up to once again, make it seem like I'm the problem instead of actually trying to listen to what the issue is here at hand. And the reason why I'm not talking to my uncle is because he has bipolar depression and growing up, he has always been like missing. Anytime that 
like anybody in our family or my granny says something that he doesn't like, he throws a tantrum and then he like doesn't talk to us for five years, which understandable. Our entire family suffers with mental health issues. So yes, he has bipolar depression, but like we have depression too, anxiety. Like where do you think we get it from? Our grandparents. So I always feel like I understand that you have mental health issues, but so do the rest of us. And we don't use that as an excuse to treat our family badly or throw a tantrum and stop talking to them every time they say something that we don't like. Like, I don't get it. So that's why I always felt like I didn't really have a lot of respect for him because he would always just like go no contact anytime anybody tried to hold him accountable. He would throw a fit and then like take it out on the entire family and not talk to us for five years. So I have been deeply affected by that since I was a child because growing up, me and my uncle were really close. So when he went missing for a long time, at the time, I didn't understand why because I didn't know how badly his mental health was. So it really hurt me that he went missing. And then when he came back, I was still a kid and I didn't understand, but things were just different between our relationship after that. So that was the first reason why I had issues with my uncle because I felt like, why is it that every time one person in the family says something, the rest of us have to suffer and you don't understand why, how you leaving has impacted me because not only does it just hurt your child or your granny, I mean your mother, but you also have like nieces who care about you too. And whenever you go missing, like that hurts, but that's neither here nor there. So that kind of gives you a history of like how my uncle is. And then one year we, in 2018, I was going through a really rough year. I had been going through like harmful thoughts um, because my mental health was really bad. I was stuck in a toxic situation at work. My workplace was really toxic. Um, I was also going through a lot of stress with school because my program was getting like taken away and my college was basically like, oop, in order to finish your degree, you need to take coding one, two, and three all at the same time. And you need to hurry up and finish your degree by August because we're getting rid of it. Understandably, that would send anyone into a spiral because I thought I had a certain amount of time, another year or two to like stretch my degree out because for my mental health, I wasn't going to school full time because I barely made it through high school. Why would I try to rush through my degree in college? Like, I know myself, I can't handle a whole, taking a whole bunch of classes at once, plus working at the same time. So that understandably sent me, sent me into a spiral because not only is my workplace toxic, but on top of that, my degree is getting, they're getting rid of my degree at my school. So now I'm forced to take a whole bunch of classes at once and hurry up and finish my degree in a short amount of time. And then on top of that, like, my mental health is just already bad. So I ended up having like an anxiety attack and a meltdown, basically a mental breakdown and quit my job like impulsively because it was so toxic. I don't even want to go into detail about like how horrible that fast food job was. Like my managers used to throw things in the back whenever we would get busy. There was always drugs in the bathroom, like homeless people always around, like no shade, no tea to homeless people. But like as a minor, it was too much to deal with. And I don't know why I stayed at that job for as long as I did going into college past when I was 18. So I quit that job because it was too much. And then on top of that, trying to work there and now having to go to school beyond basically full time in order to finish my degree so I can actually graduate was stressful. Then not to mention the day that I graduated college, and we had the award ceremony. I found out that my mom was diagnosed with cancer. You guys know that she's fine now, but at the time, it was understandable that my life felt like it was over. I felt like, okay, this is just great. I don't have a job. My mental health is bad. I'm trying, I'm stressed to see if I'm even going to be able to finish school in time. And then on top of that, my mom has cancer. So my hair started falling out, my skin was breaking out. I was binge eating like things were really bad in 2018, babes. Okay, your girl was not okay in any way, shape or form. Mind you, my uncle was still no contact with us at the time. And then my miraculously, he ended up like contacting me or something. And I ended up telling him about my mom's cancer. Tell me why this man proceeded to tell me 
basically that her cancer didn't matter and that like she's not the only one with cancer and that was so offensive to me because it's like this is your sister that you're talking about how could you say that her cancer doesn't matter and on top of that let alone he doesn't care about what she's going through he especially didn't care to see what I was going through so because I was going through the worst time of my life and he said that, that set me off into another mental crisis again because I was not used to my uncle, someone that I had looked up to that was supposed to protect me, talking to me that crazy. Like that's not even the worst of what he said. He said a lot of things on this conversation that were really triggering but basically he was so disrespectful towards me. He invalidated every single thing that I had to say during that conversation when all I really just needed was support and love during what was one of the worst times of my life. And he basically just like popped off on me and said like, what you're going through doesn't matter. What your mom is going through doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, I hate this entire family. And I'm like, Okay, so understandably at that time, I'm like, you know what? I'm sick of this. I have been walked all over by this family for so long. So for the very first time in my life, I stood up to somebody in my family and I cussed him out because he wanted to cuss at me. So I'm going to cuss at you. Mind you, I was not in a good mental headspace at this time. Binge eating, didn't want to be on this earth, hair falling out. Don't know if I'm going to be able to graduate college. And then he does this. Of course, that was the tip of the iceberg, babe. So I popped off on him. And yes, I think I kind of went manic at the time. And I do regret that a bit because I also like would send him like multiple text messages. Like every time I thought about anything he ever did that pissed me off in the past because I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? So every time I would think about something he said, I'm firing off text. F you, F his family. Like at the end of the day, like you just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Cause I had time that day. He even tried to block me. I would get a new, that app where you can get a new number and I would text him from a new number. You can't escape me, babes. Brrr, firing off text messages. Cause it's like, shoot, you had it coming. Not only did you come in me, you came in my mom. At that point, I didn't even know what stage cancer she had. She could have died in the next couple of months to live. I didn't know at the time. Thankfully, she had stage zero. So my girl is Gucci because she's a survivor and a fighter. But yeah, like he really turned up on me. So I, I turned up back on him. Turn your click up, dog. Yeah. And then after that. We exchanged words. He was rude to me. I was rude to him. And we didn't talk for three years. That understandably made everybody in the family upset. And of course, whose side do you think my granny took? Her son's. Because she's one of those moms who like her sons can't never do any wrong. So even though my uncle told me that my mom's cancer didn't matter, do you think she cared? No. And do you think that she cared that I wanted to unalive myself and that I was going through one of the hardest times in my life and that, and that year? No, all she cared about was the text messages that I sent and what I said, rather than the disrespect that he gave his niece, the person that he's supposed to be protecting. So all of these years, everybody in the family has been acting like I'm the problem for standing up for myself rather than taking into consideration the horrible time that I was going through and all the awful things that he said to me. So every time our family was supposed to get together, they're just like, oh, Kristen, do you think you could try to talk it out? Do you think you could try to talk it out? Okay. For so long, I said no. But then finally, one day I called him and I said, you know what? I'm tired of everybody asking me to get along with this man. If he don't want to say sorry, it is what it is. Let me just try to say sorry. So I apologized. You know, I said, let's just move on for the greater good, you know, and he said, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm like, okay, do you think that you could apologize to me? You think you can say sorry to me? He said, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know. I just sat here and apologized for every single thing that happened and you can't say sorry. He said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He just kept saying, I don't know. 
correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really know what there is to not know about. It's simple. Just say sorry. But because he's so stuck in his ways, so narcissistic and toxic and self-absorbed, he couldn't even say sorry to his niece. Mind you, he has a child who has a child. You're a grandpa. Is this the lesson that you want to teach your grandson to not give other people in your life grace and treat others with respect? So at that point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm done. I don't got nothing else to say because I already tried to say sorry and he didn't want to say sorry. So Sunday, this past week at Mother's Day, I told my granny that. And I said, what else am I supposed to do? Y'all keep saying we need this with family needs to work it out. We need to work it out. I tried. But if he doesn't want to be mature enough to say sorry back or call me back and apologize, what am I supposed to do? It was crickets. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It was getting crickets because you already know my granny didn't have nothing to say. Because really what she wanted me to do is just to shut up and be agreeable and just say sorry again, I guess. I don't know. And then, of course, like I said, I started crying because once again, I just felt like I wasn't being seen. I wasn't being heard. She tar- She started talking about, yeah, you know, because when you, but at the end of the day, when you start texting people stuff, you know, that's forever. I'm like, okay. See, once again, it's like, you're not even trying to listen to me. All you're bringing up is the text messages that I sent. Then on top of that, out of everybody in the room, she tried to be like, yeah, Kristen, and it also hurts me that when I had my surgery, you didn't call me to check on me, or, you know, or, or help out. Huh? At the end of the day, you have two grown adult sons and a daughter who are more than capable of taking care of you. Why are you putting that responsibility on me? I'm just your grandchild. You have two, full, three full grown adult children. I don't, I'll never understand why my granny always wants to try to put her son's responsibility on me. So that set me off too, because then she tried to say that I didn't call her and then proceeded to say at the same time, but I also have phone records that you did call. I'm telling you guys, nothing this woman ever says makes sense. She was constantly like contradicting herself at every point during this conversation on Sunday. How are you going to say that I didn't call you, but then you have records that I called? I did call this lady, even though I didn't want to. And I said, hey, granny, hope you're doing okay after your surgery. Let me know if there's anything you need. I told her that twice. And then I also told my mom, hey, while you're going over there, take care of granny. If there's anything you need, let me know. I remember one time my granny's car needed work done during that time when she couldn't drive. My mom was supposed to come get me. She never showed up. I'll call her later. How come you never came? Oh, granny just said she'll just do it, even though she's not supposed to be driving. Okay, how is that my fault that you guys are doing everything in your power to make sure that I don't help, even though I said I would help, and then you turn around like six months later and say that I'm the problem? Huh? I tried to offer help and you didn't want to take it. And now here we are on Mother's Day when the situation happened back in October and you're still trying to blame me for not looking out for you? That's not my problem that you didn't communicate what you needed when I told you to tell me what you needed. So, yeah, that entire situation just made me realize that I cannot continue to keep taking disrespect from my family in this way because it's like, no matter what I do in my granny's eyes, it's never going to be good enough. She blames me for the reason why things are with my uncle and she blames me for not being there for her enough even though she's already said out loud that she knows that my sister and I don't really like being around her so I will never understand also why you want somebody to be around you so bad that you know doesn't want to be around you and that kind of just made me think that it's like this is enough like I can't take it anymore babes You guys are crazy. You don't ever want to listen and you're only ever going to see things the way that you want to see things. So at this point, I'm out. And I decided to draft a letter to my grandmother to get out every single thing that I felt like I couldn't say when I was a child. And I'm going to tell you guys just a few of the things that she did to me growing up 
that have contributed to the reason why I'm going no contact because Mother's Day, the way that she behaved showed me that she's never going to change and she's always only going to think that she's right and that her sons are right. For example, growing up, I remember one time, um, my parents were just divorced and my uncle obviously didn't like my dad and I don't think that my mom likes, I mean, my grandma likes my dad either, but because they were divorced, my dad would have to come to my grandma's house because we lived with my grandma. Those were the worst years of my life, by the way. <laughs> we lived with my grandma and my dad had to come get us because he had joint custody. I think we would see him like once every, once a week plus the weekends. Either way, my dad would come to the house and I don't think my granny liked seeing my dad. And because she didn't like that, my uncle didn't like that. So my uncle called my dad, cussed him out, and basically said, do not go to my mother's house anymore. If you want to see your kids, you're going to have to see your kids on the corner. Who would want their niece or their granddaughter to go see their dad on a corner like they're just some little homeless children? I'm so confused about that, babes. Why would I have to go to the corner, like a bus stop type of situation? Like we're just poor little homeless children to go see my own dad. Like, girl, get over yourself. That was ridiculous. Also, she always made constant remarks about my weight growing up, um, which I didn't understand because it was like, why do you feel the need to comment on something so personal and sensitive and be cruel about my weight when I'm just a kid rather than encouraging me and helping me learn healthy eating habits or helping my relationship with exercise get better you just constantly bashed me so she's basically the reason why I had issues with my size and loving myself growing up but thankfully your girl loves herself because of all the therapy that I've gone through but no thanks to her um it's also really confusing because one time she called me a little devil and it was basically after my parents divorce again I was only like 10 and my mom picked us up from from my dad's house one day and her new boyfriend was in the car so instead of like my granny or her being like hey we've got somebody that we want you to meet soon you know it's okay they didn't give us any warning so understandably, I was sad, scared, and confused when this strange man was in the car and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, like this is my mom's boyfriend. When you're a kid and your parents get their first boyfriend and girlfriend after divorce, it's scary because you're only used to being around your mom and dad and them being together. I feel like that's like a normal feeling for a child to have. So it's not like I hated the guy. But at the same time, I was just scared and confused because I was a kid and that was my first time going through something like that. So I came home and I was crying because it was just overwhelming. I was unprepared. Like she just sprung it onto us and we didn't have like any way to prepare for this. And my granny called me a little devil and said that I was being selfish for not being happy for my mom. But it's like in that moment, what I needed was comfort. Like her lack of empathy just only made my fear and anxiety worse because it's like why my little devil like it's not like I'm not happy for my mom I want my parents to be happy but do you not understand why I'm scared <laughs> like I'm so confused and then it just kills me because it's like my granny is also divorced like my granny and grandpa have not been together since my mom was 18 so I would think that as a person who's been through a divorce, she would understand why that transition was hard for us. But I feel like the only thing that she ever did after we moved in with her after the divorce was just judge us. Like she was so hard on us. And I think that she resented how much we cared about my dad. So she would always just be like, y'all love y'all daddy. But at the end of the day, your mama's not going to be around forever. And I'm like, yes, I know that. But at the end of the day, like you have to realize that after the divorce, we didn't really know my mom because my mom was like working 16 hour shifts. She was always sleeping. So my dad was basically my primary parent up until then. So he was really all I knew. So if we're going through a divorce and all of a sudden our dad moves out, our parents split and then I have to move in with my granny. It's going to be an adjustment period for any child to get used to not being around their dad anymore if all they know is being around their dad. But it was almost like she resented that. 
and like wanted us to just love and appreciate our mom more. But it's like, I don't love one parent more than the other, but at the end of the day, I'm used to being around my dad. So anytime my sister would cry and be like, I miss daddy. She'd just be like, y'all love y'all daddy and like make us feel bad about it. And then I just didn't understand that. Also, she would always talk about me for being a picky eater. So instead of supporting me and like making me feel like I had a safe space to try new foods as a kid, she only ever shamed me about it, which like naturally made me more scared to try new things. Um, and she also judged me and my sister for not knowing how to like do laundry, cook or clean when we first moved in with her. But mind you, if I was like 11, my sister was like nine. How is that our fault that we didn't know how to clean, cook or do laundry? Our parents didn't teach us, which no shade, no tea to my parents. But at the end of the day, like, that's not my problem, babe, that I don't know how to do this stuff. I'm just a kid. So it's like, instead of trying to like teach us to learn how to cook with her, you know, teaching us how to do laundry, like making it a bonding experience and like embracing us with love. She basically was just upset that we had to move in with her and we didn't know how to do anything. So she would just constantly shame us about it and make it seem like it was our fault. But it's like, that's not on us that our parents didn't teach us how to do that. And then like now, whenever I watch Food Network and I see people like have these special relationships with cooking, you know, and they're always like, oh, my grandmother taught me how to cook. I always get so sad because it's like, I wish that I had that bond with my grandma. You know, I didn't learn how to cook until I basically moved out into my own apartment three years ago um, because she just always shamed me about it. And I didn't really have any confidence to try. So that was another thing. Also, like when I first moved in with her, she didn't give me a key to her house, even though I rode the bus. So whenever I would ride the bus, I don't think that my granny used to be home, but my mom would be home. But I told you guys that she used to work 16 hour shifts and sleep a lot. So my mom would be in there KO and I would be standing outside with my neighbor's dog off the leash, like terrified, banging on the door, waiting for my mom to open the door. And for some reason, my granny just thought that I was like this sneaky little demon. Cause like I said, you called me a little devil. I don't know why y'all. I swear I was not a bad child in any way, shape or form. She's just crazy. So she didn't trust me to have a key to her house. And I'm like, girl, I need to get in the crib. Oh, like my mom is not entering the door. This dog is trying to bite me, babes. Then on top of that, there was a trap house, Yana across the street. Them dudes used to be looking at me. I could have been assaulted, but do you think she cared about that? No. So I think I did finally get a key after, you know, crying, screaming, throwing up about it. But for a long time, I would be stuck outside. Also, she would always like put a lot of pressure on me for being the oldest and just be like, you need to help your mom out more. But it's like, as you know, being the eldest child, I feel like you sacrifice so much of your childhood and look out for your little siblings and you do so much. But at the end of the day, do you think my granny cared about that? No, she always felt like I should be doing more. But it's like, girl, ever since I could drive, I was the one doing grocery shopping in the house. I'm the one helping my mom take my sister to her doctor's appointments, helping her run her errands. But you keep saying I need to be doing more and you're getting mad at me for not coming to see you after your surgery when my mom's coming to see you. So who do you think is looking out for my sister when she's coming to look after you? Like, it just always seems like it's never enough. My uncles used to always get on me about that too. Every time I talked to them, instead of asking me how I'm doing, they would always just be like, you need to be doing more for your mom. She's a single parent. And I'm like, babe, what do you think I'm doing? My dad lives two hours away. So it's only so much he can do. God bless his soul. But I'm basically giving third parent here. And you guys don't even see that. You're constantly just making it seem like I need to be doing more and more and more. Like, hello? So that used to get on my nerves too. And then like, whenever I would, you know, have normal human emotions as a child and I would have frustration I always felt like I wasn't allowed to show my feelings because she'd be like, y'all ain't never been through nothing. So why are you upset? I also remember another time she said that I needed to learn how to be hungry. Guys, I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. Like, what do you mean I need to learn how to be hungry? Um, I don't really know why you would want your grandchild to be hungry. 
But hey, that's her. And the biggest thing of it all that hurt me the most was like when I was getting ready for prom. I went to prom once. I didn't go to any other prom. I didn't go to my prom. I went to my boyfriend's prom because he went to a school that I went to for my freshman and sophomore year. So I already knew everyone at his school and at my new school. I didn't have any friends. So it just made sense to go to his prom. But I went to his prom and the day that I was getting ready, I remember my mom asking if she would help me get ready that day or if she would be there when I did my makeup. And my granny said no. Guys, I don't know why. She said no. And then she just stayed away from us until I was ready. And like, I feel like that was a missed opportunity to bond with me and like support me during an important milestone. Like, huh? And then I also remember like, you guys know that me and my boyfriend have been together since I was 16. So he's been in my life. This November will be our 12 year anniversary. So he's been around for a long time. So understandably, he gave me a promise ring because we had already been together for a long time at that point. And when I showed my granny my promise ring, I've got it on right now. If you guys ever wonder what this ring is, if you're watching on YouTube, it's my promise ring. Um, when I showed it to her, she was like, oh, you think you and Juwan are going to be together forever, huh? Girl, what? Just say, oh, I'm so happy for you. That's so sweet. I love Juwan. He's such a great guy. Why, why can't you just be nice? Like, girl, like, I will never understand it, guys. I will never understand it. And it was like, anytime I had anything to ex like exciting to tell her about, she would always just bring me down and make me feel so low. Like, I'm so confused. And then it was like, when we were living with her, I would always just feel so worthless because nothing I ever did was good enough, like I said earlier. And then every other Sunday at dinner, we would get yelled at because we were supposed to do the dishes and we left one spoon in the sink or something. I remember one time she legit did have a mental breakdown before we went to school because there was a spoon left in the sink, a singular spoon. And she was like, oh, you guys hurt me so bad. I asked you guys to do one thing and you can't even do that. And it's like, girl, it was a spoon. We try our best to do what we can, but at the end of the day, like we have crippling depression and we are sad. We're going through an extremely rough time because our parents are divorced and we hate living here. But do you think that she tried to just embrace us and see that we were just hurting and, and just give us a hug during that time? No, no. All she did was just yell at us every other Sunday. So it got to the point where we lived upstairs in the attic. I would never even want to go downstairs, guys, because I just knew anytime I was down there existing, she would say something smart. She would say something mean. And then especially if we would have family dinner on Sundays, you would normally want to look forward to having family dinner. But for me, it was hell because I'm like, I already know that the dinner is going to go good for the most part. And then when we think we're okay to leave, she'll be like, no. And then like find something else to like yell at us about. So that was literally my childhood. Like, and on top of that, I was always having to be around my granny. Like, my mom is close with my grandma. So it's not like I could escape. Like, my entire childhood, even when we didn't live with her, we were always over there. So it's like, bus, another club, another club. <laughs> like, I'm getting attacked all the time. There is no break. Anytime my parents were working and we, somebody needed to babysit, we had to be with her. Like, it was crazy. And then it's just so confusing, like I said, because after all of that, after every single, like, that's not, that's not even, that's just a percentage of the things that she said to me, not to mention all of the things that she said to my sister, because she bullies us for different reasons, but I'm just talking about my truth and the things that I've been through. But it's like, after all of that, after all the cruel, mean things that you've done to me and the things you've put me through and all the ways that you've chosen to just give me judgment rather than love. In 2024, I'm sitting there in your living room and you're still making me feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm 28 and I'm still crying because my granny is like being mean and judgmental and not trying to hear my side. It's crazy. So it's like I already had beef with this lady because of everything she put me through. Then not to mention, not only are you cruel, but your son was cruel to me. And you're saying that I'm the problem. Oh, so matter of fact, I'm done with all y'all. 
because I'm not about to continue to keep putting my mental health at risk, putting in the work and therapy, and then having to get dysregulated every time I see you guys. None of you want to put in the work to try to be nicer, kinder human beings. So why am I continuously putting myself through this? And while I was crying, the only thing that I could think about was the fact that I don't want my kids in the future to have to be subjected to this crazy behavior. Like, it's really, really crazy. And it's just so confusing to me how even when I said that my mental health was bad, she rolled her eyes. It confuses me why she doesn't take my mental health seriously, but constantly makes excuses for her sons. How is his diagnosis more important than mine? or anybody else's when every single person in the family is diagnosed with a mental health issue. My therapist also said she thinks my granny is undiagnosed with something. Let me know in the comments. What do you think it could be? Cause I don't know, but do you think she's going to try to get the help that she needs? No. And it's also so confusing to me because it's like, she says she's such a God fearing woman. My granny has been the head of the nursing ministry at church for so long. And it just gags me how all the people in the church think that she's just the nicest, sweetest, kindest lady, but she has treated us like absolute trash our entire lives. Like, I don't get it. You're childish. Your sons are childish. Nobody wants to take accountability. And all you guys ever do is think about how things hurt you rather than how they affect me or anybody else in the family. And then what kills me is it's like every single time he throws a temper tantrum, my uncle, like I said, she excuses the behavior. But yet let me have my moment in 2018. Oh, she's the problem. And it's also just makes me like really concerned too, because growing up, my grandfather's passed away now, but he was physically abusive to everybody in his family. So my grandmother is unfortunately a victim of domestic violence and, you know, so are my uncles like, and they've been through a lot growing up and I've tried to try to understand how much their trauma has affected them and shaped them into the person that they are now because my grandpa was an alcoholic and he was also doing drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs, but it was crazy. Um, so he was really, really, really awful to them. And towards the later years of his life, he had a stroke and then he turned his life around. So the only version of him that I know since growing up was he was just like a kind, nice, quiet guy. But before that, he was giving demon time. So you would think that because my uncles and my granny have suffered so much trauma that they would naturally be like kinder, nicer, more understanding people. But I feel like somehow it took them to the opposite side and it just made them more cold and numb and like calculated. So they like literally genuinely don't know how to have empathy or care about anybody else's opinion other than their own. Like, that's just really confusing to me, too. So, I, I don't really know. But either way, I just felt like it was time for me to just be a little bit transparent and tell my story and kind of just get it off my chest. Because... This is only a fraction of all of the verbal abuse that I've had to endure. Um, nobody from out of them three, the two uncles and my granny, have ever made me feel like I'm enough. So at the end of the day, it's like I'm not about to keep doing all this work to try to be prepared to see you guys. And then you every time I see you, you make me feel like I'm taking five steps back in my mental health journey. Like... Is ridiculous. So yeah, I did write my letter and I'm going to be sending it off to let her know every single thing I ever felt. Um, do I, do we think that she's going to even care? Probably not because if she rolled her eyes on Sunday when I was talking about my mental health. She's probably going to roll her eyes when she, she sees my letters too. She's probably not going to care, but at the end of the day, like I did it for me, you know? So, and I also did it for like my future children, like Every time I think about my future, it feels so much more happy knowing that they won't be in my life 
And I know everybody's always like, oh, you got to think about mortality. What if something happens? And it's like, yeah, that's frustrating, you know, but it's not like I chose to be like this. I've tried time and time again to reason with all of these people. But, and like my granny always keeps saying, well, you know, I did apologize. She apologized to everything that she's ever done to us one time, one time. And even then it wasn't even a sincere apology. She also apologized on Sunday when I started crying and was like, sorry, I made you cry. I ain't mean to make you cry. But the way she said it was like, you don't really care. (laughs) You, You don't really care. So it's like, I'm tired of trying. I've tried to express myself how many times can you continue to keep putting up boundaries or expressing yourself or fighting to get people to see your side and they don't want to like I'm exhausted I'm not strong enough to get, keep getting cussed out by my uncle every five years he throws a tantrum or continuously feeling like I'm not enough for my for my granny like it's a chop so you know people may have their feelings about that And it is unfortunate, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, if anybody wants to come for me for my decision, I don't really care. Like it's my decision. It's my life. And none of you had to endure the trauma that I had to endure, you know? So if anybody has anything to negative to say, Hey, glad that you had a good childhood, but that's not my circumstance. And I say I had a good childhood because of my parents. I'm talking about, like I said at the beginning of the episode, the trauma comes from the extended, the immediate family outside of them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it was time for me to say what I had to say. I kind of want to just, just like dive in more and talk about my experience and the reason why I'm choosing to go no contact and also you know, mainly for me, but also if there's anybody else out there who's listening to this story and has experienced similar verbal abuse or emotional neglect from people in their lives that they look up to and felt like we're supposed to protect them, like you're not alone, you know? And at the end of the day, like all we can do is continue to do what makes us happy. Yes, we're going to feel guilt And they're going to continuously make it seem like we're the problem. But at the end of the day, you have to remind yourself that like narcissistic people truly are mentally incapable of blaming anybody else. I mean, blaming, they're incapable of blaming themselves and taking accountability. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's going to be times where, you know, obviously you're going to feel sad that you feel like, why couldn't I have gotten the love and the treatment that I deserved? But at the end of the day, like you just have to realize that you're dealing with humans and they just don't have the tools in their toolbox to love you the way that you want to be. And it's unfortunate, but at the end of the day, like that's reality. It's reality. So it's like anybody out there who's always like, but that's your grandma, but that's your uncle, but I'm their niece. I'm their granddaughter. It's like, I don't want to continue to keep dealing with this whole like victim blaming. We're not going to blame the victim because I'm the victim in the situation. Or if you've been in this situation, you're the victim in this situation. Do not let anybody continue to make you feel like you're the problem. The finger should be pointed at the abuser. Hello? (laughs) So overall, like I said, I just hope that if anybody hears this, it brings you comfort in knowing that there's other people out here who are struggling with it too. All we can continue to do is put our mental health first. And I guarantee you, you will be happier because I was already kind of going minimal contact for the past year as it was because she mentioned on Sunday, like you don't even come around as much for as many holidays. Cause it was like, I'm tired of every 4th of July being depressing I'm tired of all of my Christmases being sad you know like I shouldn't have to dread the holiday coming up because I know I'm gonna have to see that side of my family and I know I'm gonna be picked apart at dinner I want to be able to go to a Christmas dinner where I'm happy so that's why I've decided to start doing my own thing you know in my own house in my apartment And I think that the biggest thing here is that I've created a a space where I'm safe 
in my own home with my new family, with my boyfriend. And that's all that matters. Like I want to continue to build traditions with him and then eventually our children. So that way Christmas can be a happy thing. And you know that you don't have to be around people you don't want to be around. So If you don't want to go to that dinner, don't go to that dinner. If you don't want to be around those people, don't be around those people. Because it's like, what's the worst you're going to do? You can't come over here and beat me up. You can't do what you did when I was a child and take things away from me. I'm fully independent, babe. I pay my rent. I pay my bills. And that's what also made me think about it. Because it's like, why am I sitting here in my house that I'm paying rent for being sad over somebody who's like, not helping me in any way, shape or form. You're not paying my my consumers. You're not helping me with groceries. You don't pay my car note. You don't live here. Why am I allowing my safe space to be filled with negative energy, crying and boo-hooing over people who aren't helping me? And that's what's like so satisfying. So to anybody who's like still stuck in that situation, I feel so sorry because that's how I felt too when I was still living under my granny's roof. And I think that's why I always felt like I had to try to strive for so much independence because it's like, okay, once I move out, what can you do? You can't take any anything away from me. You can't, you can't beat me up. (laughs) Like what do you, what do you do? Try to beat me up. Even if you try to pull up to my place, I don't have to let you in. So it's like, you know what? It really don't make sense while I'm over here stressed about these old people who aren't even adding anything into my life emotionally or financially. So, yeah, I'm also going to make sure that I include some resources um, down below in the comment. I mean, in the description on YouTube or on Apple and Spotify of different videos that I've watched that have helped me, uh, you know, go through this process mentally because I want to be able to help you guys too. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, because those type of videos like really make me feel a lot of comfort. I think sometimes when I'm going through something, whenever I look up and see like other people going through it and seeing how, what steps they're taking to get through it, it always makes me feel a lot more hopeful. So Hopefully you feel the same way. So that will be in the description everywhere that this podcast is available. So that way you guys can go check it out. Um, And I also just want to say that you are worthy of love. You are enough. You are capable. And if you guys have any other questions for me or if there's anything else that you want me to talk about when it comes to things that may have happened in the past or if you want to learn more about my journey into healing going forward, with no contact and stuff like that because there still is a lot more to process with like the grief of it all then let me know um but yeah hopefully like all of this kind of made sense you know what I'm saying I feel like I was kind of all over the place but I really just wanted to use this episode as like the first stepping stone to get you guys to understand like what has happened why it happened and then what I'm you know gonna do moving forward So yeah, let me know in the comments, anything you guys want to know, or if you guys have, you know, went through a similar situation. And like I said, at the beginning of the episode, make sure you give this video a like, a comment, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, rate that five stars in that review on Apple and Spotify, you are loved, you are worthy. And with that, I will see you guys next week. And hopefully we'll talk about something more fun. (laughs) All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Fully cause I make rich look rich y'all. Save your breath, baby. I'm not going home with y'all.